Well, I met with all the players for an exit meeting, and now I'm meeting with you to exit from you and <laughs> enjoy life a little bit. I'm going to head down to uh, New York City and root the Gophers on, and maybe we can win a championship in New York. You know, this is, um, was a very exciting season, and the NCAA tournament, every year I'm in it, I think it gets more and more exciting. Maybe the coverage is more extensive and the replays and everything, but it, it, every single game just blows me away. That Wisconsin game was incredible. The Kentucky game was unbelievable. Uh, the Connecticut game uh, was unbelievable. Just, just what goes on in college basketball, it's by far the greatest month of any sporting event because no one has any clue to who's going to win. Now, it is a game of matchups. It is a game of matchups. That's why, you know, we played so well against Connecticut this year. Um, and it's, it'll be very, very interesting uh, going, going forward if the two teams I think could possibly win will face each other maybe for a fourth time. And uh, so it's going to be very exciting to see. Um, kudos to, to Kentucky and Florida and Wisconsin. Um, it was very, very very nice to see Bo Ryan get there. Uh, I didn't realize he never got there before. I thought he did one at a time. And for a guy that's paid his dues so long, um, to get there is just an unbelievable thing for him uh, and Wisconsin and certainly Connecticut. Um, you know, they got a chance to play in the Garden. We know what that's like going against Syracuse in the Garden. Uh, when you go against Connecticut, it's the same thing. But it had to be very, very exciting for them. So. Um, Congratulations to all four of those teams. I was real pleased with this year. Um, what you hope as a coach is that the players play up to their potential. And our team all season long uh, played up to their potential, took no one lightly, respected everyone, and played their butts off for every possession of the season. And, and I was very pleased with that, very excited, winning a regular season championship, a tournament championship. And, um, and certainly going to a Sweet 16 and playing a great game against Kentucky. But uh, Kentucky causes major problems for anybody on the backboard, as you all witnessed yesterday. And Wisconsin's plus one three on the backboard. So uh, they've got a tall task ahead. And uh, what they do very well is they put you in isolated pick and roll situations with six five guards, six four guards, and you go down the lane. If you help, then you see guys like Marcus Lee come in and dunk the ball. So it's, it's a challenge for everybody to defend them one-on-one -on -one in the pick and rolls and keep them off the glass. And then the other thing is they, they shoot the ball great. They shoot free throws great. Um, it'll be very, very exciting for both Florida playing Connecticut and Wisconsin playing Kentucky. It'll be a great Final Four. As far as our future is concerned, uh, with Montrez Harrell, what we're going to look at more than anything else is um, everybody's coming out now. You wait to see how many nine players come out with Kentucky to see how it would fall. <laughs> uh, so, it, you know, uh, Kentucky's roster changes the draft quite a bit. Um, so we'll see what happens there. And my advice to Montrez is just relax, enjoy the two years you've had here, sit back, and see what happens. The most important thing is if he slips into the 20s, he's going to be drafted by a good team. If you're drafted by a good team, you don't play that much. If you don't play that much, you don't get any statistical things, obviously, to improve your, your next contract. And that's what uh, a short version of what I s said to him, the long version of how he should look at it. Now, if he is drafted, you know, like from 10 to 16, 17, then obviously it's going to be something he'll consider strongly. But if you go into the latter part of the draft and you've got to sit behind somebody, you're better off coming back and trying to be a top six, seven player in a draft. That's what I told him. But I don't influence my players in these areas. I really don't. I don't tell them what agents to pick. The only thing I try to get involved in their lives is give them the information, make sure they save their money, let them pick whatever agent they want, make whatever decision they, uh, they make. But I, I just give them the information. That's the, I never tell a player what to do because that's their life, and I wouldn't want somebody uh, telling me what to do. Um, questions? I think he's improved so much. The NBA is, is, everything is about with them, it's now measurements. 
And the one thing you keep hearing about is length, length with guards, length with forwards. They all talk about length. It's almost become like football, like a combine, you know, and it's, it's, it's gotten that detailed. It's money ball. You know, it's, 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 it's all those details. And, and uh, certainly he, his measurements are very good in that area. Uh, to be honest with you, Russ, I think we're going we're gonna to be very good with or without him. Uh, now, we'll be much better with him because we'll be um, older and more experienced, but we're still going to be very, very good because our backcourt is good and our front court will improve. Now, we have a lot of unanswered questions with the bigs that we have coming in, and we'll play the toughest schedule. Now, we, we played a two or three times the number one, two schedule in the nation when we're in the Big East. I think this will beat that. I don't know how you can beat number one, but I think this could be the toughest schedule we've ever played coming up this year. I don't really, you know, I know Duke and Carolina. Um, certainly, I was very impressed with Virginia this year. But I don't, a lot of the teams like Clemson and Florida State, I'll, I'll get a look at Florida State uh, tomorrow. Um, there's a lot of teams in that conference I really don't know. So, like Virginia Tech, now they got a, somebody that I really like as a basketball coach. That was a great hire for them with Buzz. It's a league of, like the Big East, of dynamite coaches. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it'll be, you know, anytime you're in a league with Syracuse, Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, North Carolina, Duke, Miami will be back. And, and teams like that, it's, it's going to be unbelievable. For, it's, it's great for the fans. It's great for the fans, certainly. And, um, but when you look back on this season, you know, and you all, I mean, you're judged on how to report for today or for the weekend. We're judged on getting our team ready for March. But, you know, what I witnessed this year, I've always said, I said it seven, eight years ago, I coined that phrase about the microwave society. It's times 10 today because, you know, I, all of a sudden I flip on, on something, I think maybe ESPN, and read something that the coach of Vanderbilt is, is defending as he's going in to play Tennessee, a coach because they think he's hearing rumblings about Tennessee making a move. <laughs> and now I hear everybody's after him just you know, six weeks later. And then you all asked me just two weeks ago, did I think John Calipari was going to the pros because he wasn't having that immediate success that you wanted. Uh, the Kentucky grads in this room who asked that question. Um, <laughs> so it just changes overnight, you know, and, and then all of a sudden, I think it was Ohio State wins 19 in a row, Syracuse wins 25 in a row, and then that factors in the tournament. And, and then now Connecticut, you would think, in senior night, they had no chance and look at there in a final four. So it's, that's what makes this thing the greatest game of all because, you know, you, you can probably line them up in football and you can tell by the size and, and everything else who's going to win. But in basketball, you can't do that. And, and it's, it's been a blast watching this whole thing evolve this year. Have you, any other, do you expect anybody else to leave? We, you know, we may entertain a 50 a guy um, oh, in our program. Uh, no. I won't move quick on this one uh, at all. I'll take my time. We're going to have a very young team, so I want a very good teacher uh, to come in. Kevin Keats w impacted our program in a big way. He's grown a lot. You know, he's gone from being a prep school coach to one, of, I think, one of the premier assistants in a very short period of time. I think he'll do a great job at Wilmington getting them back on their feet. Um, I know Mike Bellotto's up for a head coaching job right now, being considered strongly as one final three in a job. So I'm just going to take my time and get the right guy because we're going to be so young. I want to make sure that we have the right guy in place. He looked for it. Mango's going to have the same improvement that Gawkey had. Now, you know, you're going to see him dribble the ball better, pass the ball better, shoot the ball better. He's made substantial improvement and the only player I've had in the last four years that hasn't had substantial improvement is Wayne Blackshear. And if you ask me to rate him on a 10-star scale as a person, I'd give you an 11. But I told Wayne yesterday when, as I met with the players, you know, you reap what you sow in this game. Now, he'll show up for practice with me and he'll, he'll give me 100%. I said, son, that's, that's not what our players do here. 
the Luke Hancocks, the Russ Smiths, the Gorky Shanks, they get in early, they stay late, they come after, they come in at nighttime, and you're not doing that. So we've got to turn over a whole new leaf from this point on. I want you to text me every single day what you put into each day because he's got to, for his own sake, he's got to wake up and understand that the world will pass him by if he doesn't live in that gym. And he's a great kid. He deserves a great senior year. And, you know, I tried to use I said, Wayne, I've seen it all. I've seen a young man come in here and really didn't think I thought I made a big mistake, that he wasn't his level. Sophomore year, I said, you know, I see a little improvement, but he's not big enough, doesn't handle the ball well enough at this level. Junior year, I saw a change in his body, change in his game. And senior year, on senior night, I saw him all chanting Larry and scoring 30 points. So, you know, it's, I'm hoping that Wayne has the same senior year that Larry O'Bannon had. Well, if he's not, Shaquan Aaron's going to come in here and, and bust his tail. I'll tell you that right now. Because that, that young man could flat out play. No, not at all. Kevin is a very big part of our family. He wants to be closer to home. He's had a, a, he's had a tough go with his knee, with his leg. Tried to make a comeback twice. Now, finally, in the last three weeks, he's 100% healthy. And uh, he wants to be closer to, uh, to his home, closer to his mom, his sisters. They've gone through some, with his sisters, some difficult times. He wants to get back home, and he has our full blessing. You know, I think we've got something in place that's special right now. I think that, you know, if your backcourt's not strong, well, you look at, you look at um, con as a, Connecticut as a prime example. You know, it's, it's, their backcourt's very strong, and there are other players like Gifai and, and Daniels got better, and the young men, the big, the big kid got better. And that's what you look for. If your backcourt is strong, and I, f I fully expect our backcourt to be strong. Anton Gill's a lot better basketball player than you all have seen because he's, you know, he's playing behind Russ Smith and Terry, and he'll blossom. And um, I don't know what to expect from the freshman class. It's all a guessing game. You know, we have great size coming in. Uh, and, you know, it's with Shinano, I know he's going to be a physical basketball player. It will come in, but we've got to get him in great shape. Jalen Johnson, you'll be very impressed with. Uh, you, you'll see his skills at six foot eight, the way he handles the ball, the way he passes it. He'll dribble the ball up the court like Antoine Walker and do those things, but he's got to get stronger, and he'll evolve like this. So, but you don't know what you're getting, especially I, the one thing I don't know what I'm getting is from the two really big guys. I have no idea what I'm getting. How do you like a fire on somebody like that? I mean, just, you just kind of push them. Up. How do you use maybe the same technique that you use with Russ or maybe with Aiden? You know, with Russ, Russ is going to give you, he, he, Russ is a gym rat. You know, Wayne has got to become a gym rat right now. He's willing to do it. I asked him what he thought about the future, and he said, he joked around with me that he's on a one-day contract. He doesn't think about the future. And I said, I said, it's time for you to get on a six-month contract right now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think, it's, I think it's time for him to start really getting serious about this. He's enjoyed college. He really has. And he's a terrific young man. But it's, it's, it's his time now. He's a senior. It's his time to let the cream rise. And I believe he can do it. Because Larry O'Bannon did it. You blessed with tremendous leadership the last couple of years. Who do you think, or can you project, who do you think that next leader will be? I think it'll be by committee. I think Wayne uh, Montrez would have been the natural guy. My, 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 he leads by intimidation. You know, it's, uh, um, so he'll be the, the natural one if he comes back. But, you know, Wayne, uh, Chris, and Terry. Chris has come a long way, a long way as a person. He, he's one of the most enjoyable guys away from the lines. Between the lines, he's emotionally, um, he's emotionally, he's very emotional at times, and you've got to get him to control his emotions because He's the, one of the fiercest competitors I've seen. But, you know, like he struggled with this. Like obviously, we struggled with Russ with his free throws in that game. Then he'd be the last guy I would think that would struggle. But Chris really struggled during the year with his free throws, and he wound up shooting 77%.
Sometimes guys like Montrez Harrell are very difficult with the foul line because their hands are so big. But Montrez got to, you know, he got to develop a good touch and got better and better. So I think it'll, ha you know, it'll come by committee, um, and it all depends on what happens to Montrez at this point. Is, uh, is Chris okay with the hard ball? The other yeah, he's okay. I think he had his, his finger x-rayed. Um, Chris is going to have a, he'll be consistent in much better shape next year. I think you'll see great growth. Terry had a, an average year for a freshman, but I think he'll have a very good sophomore season. And then, of course, you know, it's, it's you never know what's going to happen uh, with, you don't see it again like Anton Gill, you don't see it because you're not in practice. Like Akoya Gal uh, has very good talent, very good ability. He just was intimidated every single day by Montrez Harrell. He was, and he'll, he'll blossom getting away from Montrez if Montrez leaves. If, he do, if, if Montrez stays, he'll, he'll, he'll probably commit suicide. <laughs> It, it was really, really special. You guys don't understand if, 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 if I believe this, if Luke Hancock was a little better defensively, he, I think he'd have a great, great pro career. Now, he can get better at that. Luke Hancock, like just that baseline drive, he goes up and dunks it. You don't understand what a good athlete he is. You, you look at him because he's, you know, he's methodical with his moves. But Luke Hancock's a great basketball player. You know, he really is a great college basketball player. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm going to have a meeting with him coming up shortly around, around noon just to, to see what his future holds. And he'll probably give the NBA a shot. My advice to him was don't give Europe a shot. Go into business here in Louisville and go become, go prosper very well. And, um, but he should give the NBA a shot. You know, I would say the same thing to Stephen. Look, the thing about overseas, the only reason you go over there is like Larry O'Bannon, is to accumulate wealth. Larry O'Bannon today has, I don't want to give away his bank account, but he has, he has great wealth. He's done it the right way. You knew he was going to go over there, save everything. He, that's what you have to do. But there are very few Larry O'Bannons that can, can do that. Be disciplined enough to go over there, save your money someday so you, could, you have wealth. That's the only reason you go over there. But once you go over there, every year you're over there, you're out of sight, out of mind, and it, it doesn't nurture your business career. So that's what, they, that's what he has to think of. If you're going over there to make sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 or 10000 a month, it's not worth it. You're better off trying to get started in business. Do you think Russ will get drafted in the first round? Or I don't. You don't? I don't. Now, it all depends on his workouts. I think Russ will make the NBA. My advice is don't be concerned about the first round. Don't be let down. Now, he, if he has great workouts, maybe he could sneak into the, the late stages of the first. And it's, he's a consensus today. It's going to be announced that he's. Oh, we're not supposed to say anything. Okay. <laughs> Just keep your eyes open for some. Yeah. Things so, like I said, I don't know what's going to happen with Russ Smith. Uh, but more than likely, he could be a consensus All-American, and he could sneak into the first round. But look at just look at, you know, everybody looks for bigs today, and look, Gordon just came out. Um, you know, players are just uh, are all going to start come out, and this is, although, a lot of the experts like Jerry West and, uh, and some other experts say it's not a great draft, it's a very deep draft, with a lot of unknowns. It's it's going to be a difficult to see, who you pick one. You know, you could probably feel who one, two, or three is, but you know, the best guy could be at seven, eight, or nine. So it'll be interesting to see. It all depends on what team I was coaching. You know, if it, if if Philadelphia gets the ball and what they need, you know, you could you look at Jabari Parker, you look at Randall, uh, you look at Embiid if you need a center. You know, it all depends on on what you need. That's what it'll come down to. Yeah, it won't be the first semester of summer school, but we're, we're going to work out today and, and start working out today. Give the guys a few days off, and we'll, um, when they come in this summer, we'll, we'll know more. The, the biggest thing is going to be like for guys like Shinanu and, and our other bigs is getting into some type of physical shape. You know, they, that's the biggest adjustment. 
um, for all of those guys. It won't be, I can tell you right now, it won't be for Shaquan. Shaquan won't have, you know, and Quinton will have a big adjustment defensively. You, know, you can see that just watching him play. He won't have an adjustment offensively. He'll have an adjustment on defense. They all do. You know, I don't know. I'm guessing. You know, I, I, the one thing about freshmen, like right now when I look at, at the savvy, you can see what they do in high school. But, you know, if you judge people what they do in high school, it, it doesn't tell you what they're going to do in college. So I, you won't know until they get in here this summer. You'll have an idea. You mentioned that you don't quite know what you've got with those two ultra bigs. Uh, how anxious are you to get those guys on campus even look at them, start working with them? You know, I, th I think it's going to be unusual to have a 7-2 and a seven-foot guy, you know, in practice. I've never, I don't think I've ever had that as a coach. I've had one, never two. And then another guy who's, you know, 6'9", 250, and Shinanu, and another guy, Mango, you know, 6'10", and he'll, hopefully he'll get, he'll get stronger. So we'll have some, some size, and it'll be interesting to see how they compete. Initially, my, uh, for the big Egyptian kid, um, and that's my, my big thing was, oh, I'm sorry. I can't say that, strike that too. Um, <laughs> let's forget everything I just said. <laughs> I can say you've got to. Yeah. Will you, will you need to. you got to have cue cards in the back of you. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the diverse, will you need a translator too? I mean, you've got all No, he. Uh, no, I mean, with man, I mean, because Mango can talk so many. It's just going to be different. Yeah, it? they all speak um, good English. Um, very good English, actually. Um, I'm not sure about uh, a big guy from Norway if he's as good as the other guys English-wise. I mean, I have spoken to him, and he, he's very bright. He has a different type of game. You know, he is um, somebody who, you know, you saw us really run a lot of good high post stuff like David Padgett did as a surprise in that Kentucky game, and we got better in the last few games doing that. He's someone that does that very well away from the basket. He really understands how to play the game there. Um, he's just going to be a... A project. Will that be also one of the focuses of the new assistant coach? Somebody that can kind of work all of the healthy work, all that in together. Yeah, I, I think, like I said, it's with the youth on our basketball team. The most important aspect is going to be teaching ability. You know, teaching ability. And uh, I have someone in mind. I don't think I could talk him out of what he's doing now, but uh, I'll see on that. I don't think we have to worry too much about recruiting right now. We only need two players for next year. But I want to bring in a, a guy who can help me really teach what these big guys need to learn. Yeah, somebody somebody I know very well I have in mind. Has the same color hair as Rick. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I, I just don't know how. He's young now. He's, he's a young guy. Like Montrez, he's young, but he's very gifted. Look, we, we, this is a top five recruiting class coming in here. It may not, you know, so it's, um, but I'm guessing as well as you. I mean, you cover this, and, you know, you just don't know how, they, how they're going to turn out. Some freshmen get it right away. Some don't. Yeah, no question. It's going to have to have the right attitude of how we play the game. And, you know, it's, um, look, we're, we're, we don't want to stop this run we're on. This has been, an, you know, I had this run once before. And um, I don't want it to stop. And so the biggest concern is not my team. The biggest concern is getting them ready for that schedule. You know, you're talking opening with a Minnesota team that has every player back, should be ranked top five in the country. Um, <laughs> uh, then, then you got Indiana in the Garden. You got Weston and Diddle with their, you know, the whole team back. You've got Kentucky at home, um, and then you have. Is every team playing the ACC yes. Big Ten? Every team does play in that. All the upper teams. Yeah, you should see if we can't play in that because we're playing Minnesota and let that count. No. <laughs> so it'd be a very tough schedule. But I think it'll get us ready. You know, uh, I always said this many, many years ago. Howard Garfinkel told me this. 
when I became the coach at BU, he said, Everett Case, who he used to be a bird dog for, an old coach from North Carolina State, he said, take a young team, put them on the road, put them against great competition, and they'll become a very good team at the end of the year. So we're going to take a young team and give them great competition, and that makes you better. Chuck Galbraith talked about these tweaks, and you, you played them in December and then in March. Did you see anything they were doing differently strategically? Or? I just think he – I'm sure he did tweak it, I, but I think he tries to put a motivational spin on his team that now we've corrected things, and and – they have, they have become a great team, great team. I mean, those kids can flat out shoot the basketball. They have great size at every position. And you don't realize how good a player like Poitras is coming in off the bench until you see what he's capable of doing. I'm sure everybody was caught off guard with Marcus Lee, we, you know, to do that. But, you know, it's um, the most impressive thing was that crossover movie made down the lane. I mean, the dunks. Yeah, everybody knew he could do that. But it's going to be um, – Wisconsin's very difficult to play against, but they're only 1.3 – they're only plus one on the glass. And uh, it's going to be a tough matchup for both of those teams uh, defensively. But Kentucky has grown in so many areas, so many areas, because we played a great game and they beat us. Uh, I mean, we, that's about as well as we've played, with the exception of our free throws. I think that um, Florida played Connecticut and lost at the buzzer at Connecticut. Um, I think Florida will um, obviously look at a lot of tape and anything can happen with Napier in the game. They can beat anybody. If he has a great night, and makes people better and does his thing, he can control the tempo of a game. So when you have that type of God, that's a Kemba Walker type God, anything can happen. But I'm extremely biased. I have like my, my sixth son coaching the team, so you know who I'm rooting for, obviously. Um, but it's, um, in the other game, it's just the contrasting styles um, I'm not sure if, if the way Kentucky's playing right now, they're awfully tough. They're awfully tough because you got to keep them off the backboard. And well, you got to stop rotating. I mean, if you and, and that's that's the problem. You come off a of pick and roll, and you got those Harrison kids that are not only playing great, but I loved them in high school, and I didn't think they were that good the first half of the season the way they were playing. But now they've evolved into great college basketball players who can pass, shoot. But they go down the lane, and if, if you don't help, they're going to overpower you with their size and length. If you help, that's when their aircraft carriers come in for, for the rebound. So it's a dilemma. And the way Michigan tried to beat them was they tried to outshoot them. And almost worked, but didn't work. Mango's a very aggressive person. If you talk to him, you wouldn't think that. But on the court, he is. He's very aggressive by nature. Um, and he's going to get great competition this year in our practices. Um, and so he'll go against, like, he went against uh, Stephen Van Treese a lot, made him very physical. You know, I say with a, a, a Coy was like T. Will with Kyle Curick. You know, it, it made Kyle Curick a good player. But you felt sorry for, for Kyle Curick every day because of what T. Will did to him. And Mango got a lot, of, a lot from Stephen Van Trees because if you didn't use aggression, Stephen would embarrass you with his aggression. So, and then Akoy with Mango. So he's going to grow. Um, I think this basketball team has, um, if you look on paper, you're not going to be overly impressed. But I'm very bullish on them because they have great pride. You know, Chris Jones and Terry Rogier have a lot of pride in what they do. And we've just got to get Wayne. We've got to get Wayne handling the ball better. He's got to be what I call a bully god, bully wing, where he takes somebody on the wing and doesn't just shoot a three-point shot. If you get on him, he bullies you to the basket. 
and goes in there and gets fouled, you know, and gets to the line. And, and you know, the one thing about Russ Smith that people don't realize why he was so great is look at how many times he gets to the line in a given game. He gets to the line. That's where Terry Rozier and Chris Jones, they don't get to the line, especially Terry. That's the one area he's got to prove because they play more east and west, and great guards play north and south. So that's going to be what we're working on with those two guards. Play north and south, don't play east and west. And um, that's probably the biggest thing we'll spend in the off season on. I want to thank all of you for your coverage. I uh, really enjoy our uh, weekly press conferences. Um, I've probably laughed more in the last three years than I have uh, at press conferences. And I intend on laughing a lot more uh, in the future years to come. So I want to thank you for your coverage. It's been great. It's been a great three years. Really proud of the senior class, proud of the team, uh, proud of Louisville basketball. We've got one more thing to accomplish before this year comes to an end to get our women back to another Final Four. And uh, I certainly would be there rooting them on Tuesday if, uh, if my son wouldn't disown me. But uh, <laughs> I hope all the Cardinal fans will get behind our women. Uh, Jeff Walls is doing another tremendous job of coaching those girls, one of the best in the game. We're very lucky to have Jeff. And uh, I, hope, I hope we get to another Final Four with them. So thank all of you. If anybody's going to New York, I'll see you there. <laughs>